the last thing I want to do, and I think this is kind of an obvious thing, is we want to use this fireball and we want to actually set the fires to the campfires. Mm -hmm. Makes sense, right? Yep. So one last component this time, I promise. Um, <laughs> so I'm going to give the fireball what's called a sensor volume. Um, if you've worked with areas in the engine before, it's a similar concept. Um, so it's, it's defining a shape around your entity. Mm -hmm. um, and then you could be notified when that shape interacts with another shape. So does this interface through the physics system? Is that how it does it? No, it's a very separate system because it's, 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 it doesn't have any impact on collision. It doesn't stop these objects from colliding with each other. It's purely there as a mechanism for surveying your surroundings. So um, an example I'd like to give is like, um, let's say you have a, a chest in the world and you want the player to be able to interact with that chest, but you also mm -hmm. want the player to be able to set that chest on fire. So that chest would have two sensor volumes. One is a sensor volume with an attribute that says, I'm interactive, mm -hmm. so that the player can just go around happily looking for things in the world that have this interactive tag. Um, at the same time, we also want this chest to have, um, it wants to be listening for other objects that have a tag that is flame. Mm -hmm. So what that's saying is we'll notify this chest when a flame touches it and it can set on fire. Oh, interesting. Um, which is actually kind of what I'm going to show now. So yes, this fireball will have a volume. We can, you can see the pale green here. This is the actual shape. I'll actually change it to a sphere. That seems like a better fit for our fireball. And yes, these tags attributes describe the object itself. Mm -hmm. So because this is on fire, we want to give it an attribute that it's a flame. Okay. Now on the campfire, we also want to add a sensor component. Um, I'll maybe make that a little bit bigger just to fit around the campfire. And this time, rather than having the attribute of flame, it wants to actually listen. So this is going to tell us, we're basically going to receive now a signal when something with a flame tag is going to bump into this thing. Okay. So the final piece of the puzzle is in our off state. Previously, we were just listening for the action pressed. Mm -hmm. But now what we can do is we can listen for, um, I think we can listen for a signal that tells us that something is entered into our sensor volume. Okay. So that's, that's the thing that tells us, okay, now we need to set on fire. So we can switch that and link that to the switch on signal as well. Mm -hmm. So again, what's going to happen is we're going to detect that it's entered and then inside the state machine, that's going to say, okay, well, it's triggered the switch on signal. So we got on. Oh, hopefully. Hopefully, yeah. So now if we go around, we should see. Oh. Ray and yep, they set on fire. Very simple. Yep. Very simple. And I'd say the idea with building this from a state machine is everything is nightly, nicely compartmentalized. So it should scale as well. You know what? You built so much stuff. I even forgot that the, the flames turned off after five <laughs> seconds. <laughs> So it's quite thorough. I mean, so this is about the, you don't have any other components you're going to be adding to the fire? Um, not at this point, no. no. Um, as I said, the, the demo that we're shipping with 5.3 goes a little bit further than that. We have, we have some trees that you can set on fire and these trees have health. And when you burn a tree, you get a score and it increments your score and we show the score on screen, things like that. So the, there's a little bit of functionality, but it's still, at the moment, it's more about proving these core concepts and building simple examples. And then for the next release, we want to really go for much more functionality. Absolutely. Well, I think it's been exciting. You've gone over the entire schematic interface and uh, shown quite a few components, the signals, exactly how you can create dynamic gameplay overall. And I think it's a good addition in 5.3 for the users. So I... Uh, I want to thank Paul for being here and showing off this amazing piece of work. You're very welcome. Yeah. And uh, maybe we can have a future tutorial where you show them how to make components and stuff. Yes. Uh, yeah, that'd be good. I think so. Awesome. Absolutely. Well, that's going to wrap it up. And I hope you guys like the new additions in 5.3.
And we look forward to hearing what you think of it yourself.